So, leave it to Bunny. <laughs> yes. Really? That one did it for you? No, that no? was Bella. Oh, that, that was, was Bella. Okay. Bella. Okay. Wow. Way to be like, oh, no, Steve. Wait, what you said wasn't funny at all. I forgot the damn Doki Doki. I forgot the Doki Doki. <sighs> yeah, uh, apparently Doki Doki is the sequel to the original. I learned so much about this uh, uh, about this anime series. It's ridiculous how much I learned about it. Well, it's got a surprisingly but, large history. But this does mean that I have watched four episodes. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, to be fair, I think I've the original. Uh, I think I've watched more episodes than you because Bella watches it all the time. Yeah. She's watched every episode of Glitter Force. So. Oh, honey. Seriously. Bella watches it all the time. You've probably watched it and you didn't realize it. Sounds amazing. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We started this But vaguely... you know what, though? Just thinking about it. Yes. I think Bob would love Glitter Force. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Most definitely. Bob would totally be into Glitter Force. Absolutely. Yeah. Bob's dirty shorts, honey. Come on. Stay in the oh. game. Bob. Sorry, There's only one Bob. Bob's burgers. Like... <laughs> Come on. We started this vaguely film related podcast at the end of 2004. Max, what are you doing in that box? You yeah. messaged me with an idea. You were going to start a series of podcasts, and right out of the gate, you had a title in mind The Pope on Film. <laughs> A film podcast with the Pope of the Church of Ed Wood, a.k.a. moi. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, you were recording three podcasts, and I know I've said this before on the show, but I will say it again. It's obvious that our podcast lasted because our podcast rocks. Basically, we won. I won. Suck at other podcasts. Yes. I've said that before. I'll say it again. Suck at other podcasts. I won. So for the next couple of months, I will occasionally – be celebrating our upcoming three-year anniversary of the podcast by putting a well-deserved spotlight on us. All and right. Our talent and our hard work and our rugged manly handsomeness and above all, above all, our humbleness. Our in humbleness, this, yes. In this installment of our three-year celebration, we put our spotlight on the year. Maxwell, sit down with the food. Honey. No, come here, food. son. Come here, son. He's just walking Set around dancing with the food. I told him not to eat it right okay. away because I pulled it right out. It's hot and he needs to let it cool it. down. Okay. He's, He's trying to keep the baby from touching it. Okay. He's dancing with hot dogs. I've seen <laughs> that. I have seen that movie. In this installment of our three-year celebration, we are putting our spotlight on the year 2014. Now, 2014 was only three years ago, and yet the last eight months have somehow lasted two and a half years. Yes. Oh yes, they so have. Long get so short. Yeah. So let's uh, focus on the faraway world of 2014. In the year 2014, are the nation's film critics decided for you. Yeah. That the year's greatest movie was the white bread gimmicky film Boyhood, a movie that to to this day I still don't know a single person who has seen it. I tried to watch it once, and and Boyhood had all everybody was screaming about Boyhood when it came out. Yeah, yeah. And who that's who, movie? Oh my god! Who yeah. did Boyhood? Hold on a second. I'm trying to. It's the, 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 uh, I'm wanting to say Judd Apatow. That's wrong. He yes. did Slackers, right? He, he did Slackers. I can't come up with his fucking name. Uh, he did Slackers. Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper. <laughs> Toby Hooper. There you go. It was him. Uh, ugh. No, but so anyway. so I so I, I I I tried watching Boyhood, and it was incredibly boring. Oh yeah, right, baby. Oh, yeah. Tried watching Boyhood, yeah, yeah, and it was just dull. Yeah, I don't know a single person who has sat through all of Boyhood. And yeah, everybody was person. screaming about this movie when it came out. 
Yeah. Because the, the the director who directed it, he's he's probably a bit more of a cult figure with movies like Slacker and things like that. Yeah. Art Linklater. I, I, Art Linklater. No, it wasn't yeah, Art Linklater. Was it? I, I believe so, yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe that was it. But yeah, no, still don't know a single person who has made it through that show. I bet Michael Burns is. For a second there, my mind was like, you know, we all had this teenage douchebag friends when we all just started getting cars. And they yep. would spin their wheels and make their tires smoke and not move anywhere. Yeah. That was my brain trying to come up with that director. Nice. It was just it was just spinning and burning and not fucking getting anywhere. Yeah. Nice. The important part is we got there. <laughs> In the year 2014, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin got a divorce. Oh, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Eight, yes. They went through a conscious uncoupling. Yes. And uh, this was the first time that many people in society, nay the world, that many people started thinking, hey, wait a minute. That Gwyneth Paltrow might be a crazy dumb bitch. Yeah, the more the more I have learned about Gwyneth Paltrow, the more you are damn right I am uncoupling, and you are damn right it is conscious. Okay, I yeah. mean, she bleaches her asshole and puts rocks in her vagina. Okay. Yes. Yes. It, it, ironically, this enough, is not does normal. Thing, does the same thing that Alex Jones does every morning, and she admits it out loud. Yeah, probably <laughs> yeah. David Avocado Wolf too. David yeah. Avocado Wolf. That would be a good couple. Yeah. That would be a would power be. couple of wackiness. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would. And they would look good standing together too. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, they would. Yes, yes, yes. She's insane. I, 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 I would imagine just like living with her for six months would be like, okay, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the year two thousand and fourteen, the movie Amazing Spider-Man Two somehow made well over seven hundred million dollars worldwide. And still bomb. I I I I, be, I I don't even know what the plot of that one was supposed to be. I, I've never seen it. I didn't it, like no, the first the one. Toby McGuire one. It was an Andrew Garfield one, and it was all right. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. But everyone just all agreed, oh, that's horrible, and they shouldn't make these anymore. But wait a second, it made over seven hundred million dollars worldwide and it was a hit and people went to go see it like i'm i'm confused that movies can make almost a billion dollars and still be considered bombs that blows my mind what are yeah. people doing oh man i hated that amazing spider-man 2 so i'm gonna see it two more times because it sucks so much <laughs> like no it was a success I, it, you know it wasn't that bad it was definitely better than spider-man 3 that was the Tobey Maguire one where he was dancing. Yeah. <gasps> Amazing Spider-Man 2 had Gwen Stacy dying and then the rhino and, uh, like, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But... No, so I, 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 I didn't that like the first can... one. I, I, it just... No. I don't know. Just... I, I think, I think Tobey Maguire was a much better Spider-Man than Andrew Garfield was. Yeah. I'm just confused that movies can be a hit and still bomb. That just blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's just weird to me. Anyway. Well, I guess it depends on how much how much they spent on it too. Yeah. Because they're spending a lot of fucking money on movies these days. Yes, they are. Now this one's gonna jump in time a little bit. We're gonna do some time jumping. In two thousand and eleven, Steve said that how I met your mother sucked. 
in 2012, Steve said that How I Met Your Mother song. Okay. In 2013, Steve said that How I Met Your Mother sucked. But in 2014, the rest of the world saw the ending to How I Met Your Mother and said, holy shit, I agree with Steve. <laughs> Where is Steve? Don't, we should have been listening don't, to him. Don't though. spoil the ending, though. I'm sorry. Yeah. Je- Jeannie's watching it, and I kind of like it. Yeah, no, everybody does until they get to the end. Okay. I've I've heard about the end, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Don't but, spoil it. Uh, did, did we just have did did we just have to smash over a really good joke of yours? I'm really sorry. No, no, no. That was it. I don't mention the ending. Okay. In the year 2014, the devastating disease known as Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS was completely cured yes. thanks to a bunch of trendy douche waffles on the internet dumping buckets of ice on their heads. Thank God they all did that. <laughs> Thank God they all did that, because now no one gets Lou Gehrig's disease. No. It's been wiped out. It was because... It was very brave of them. Yeah, very brave. So brave. We should so put up brave. a monument in Bowling Green. Yeah, yeah. That's good thinking. Yeah. In two, in the year 2014, we had a power-hungry, mad, ignorant president whose term was riddled with scandals. For example, in August of 2014, our president actually dared to wear a tan suit. What? Yes. Yes. And people got pissed about it, and they were like, how dare our president wear a tan suit? That's this is the worst scandal ever. He wore how a tan suit. How dare the president? How dare he? And he, and he bowed, oh, well, this is going back further, but he bowed once in front of a, a Japanese dignitary. Ah, see, oh, my God. See? What, 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 what? You, no, Steve asked me about things like that. And I said, oh, don't forget, Obama bowed too low to a yeah. Japanese president or uh-huh. whatever it was. See? See? I'm not the only one. Okay. okay. But we do it. But see, we do it with Trump, too. But they don't realize we're kidding. You know? Yeah. I, I, we really bitch about the shit that he actually does. But when it came to the orb, we're just having a lot of fun with this shit. And oh, lo- yeah. how low he bowed down to the Saudi. Yeah, you know, so we yeah. we do that too, but we're kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, where were we? There you go. They they In need 2000- to learn. They need to learn the difference between a joke and righteous wrath. Yes. No. Agreed. In the year 2014, Jimmy Fallon successfully took over for dumbass, rotting, unfunny, hellhole, ass face, piece of shit, fucking asshole, Jay Leno. Never thought I would see the day when Jay Leno wasn't hosting The Tonight Show. I always prayed for it. I always yeah. prayed. And I'm like, dear Lord, baby Jesus. Or as our brothers to the south call you, Jesus. <laughs> Please get Jay Leno off of my TV. Please, for the love of God, he is in no way funny. And, and I, I hardly ever, ever watch Jimmy Fallon. You know? Yeah. If he hits a home run on the show, I'll generally see that clip. You know? Yeah. So it really makes me sad that that's the Tonight Show. Yeah. That's the that's the legendary. Tonight Show. Yeah. I liked Jimmy Fallon and I liked the Tonight Show, but once he was like, uh, we're going to have a hard hitting interview with Donald Trump. Hi, Donald Trump. You're my best friend. I'm going to normalize you in front of America. Let's just have fun and do skits and I'll tussle yeah. your hair and we can drink shots because you're totally a normal person. I'm normalizing you. Yeah. I'm going to help you get elected. I'm like, no. Okay. I'm, t- I'm tapping out now. Fuck yeah. you, Jimmy Fallon. 
You helped this guy. You helped him. Fuck Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, but let's not forget Seth Meyers being completely responsible for Donald Trump's running in the first place. Yes, it's Seth Meyers' fault that Donald Trump is ru- ran for president. Yes, it is. Yes. I do Seth's blame Seth Andrews. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. In the year... Because you know what? You know what about Seth Meyers, okay? He is secretly Jeff Sessions' illegitimate son. That might be possible. That might be possible. We'll have to get, like, a DNA test. Seth knows where the hollow tree is, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do. In the year... 2014, and this is something that we'll definitely definitely talk about later in the show. But in the year 2014, for the first time ever, a Troma Pictures director said, you know what? I'm making a break for it. <laughs> and, then, and then Lloyd Kaufman says, but wait a second. No one ever escapes from here. Troma no. Pictures is Hotel California. You can check out anytime <laughs> you like, but you can never leave. You'll always be a Troma guy. No one escapes yes, from here. But no one escapes from Troma Pictures. But you can never get that stink off of you. Never. Never. No. Never. No. No, Lloyd Kaufman is really the anti Roger Corman. Yes. You know? Yeah. One day, one day, I would like to. This just came to me right now at this exact second for the first time ever, just to be clear. Yeah. But one day on the podcast, I would like to try and do The Toxic Avenger. Okay. That film scarred me for life as a child. Okay. In very disturbing ways. But now that I'm older... And wiser, I would like to try and uh, and do that movie, maybe. Okay. Not not immediately. Not immediately. Honey, I have not told him about the next episode of the podcast. I'm saving it for the end of the show, so you shut your mouth, okay? Huh? I haven't told Bunny about what what the next episode is. I haven't told him a thing. Okay. I, uh, okay. Why are you- I know, so I now, know. so I, now I have to live in fear for approximately three, three and a half hours. I didn't even know I was being. No, I'm just, no, I'm just telling you now in the beginning of the podcast. Oh, don't come in here and you start mean, talking you don't about want to things. talk about this movie. No, just, yeah, just exactly. Kidding, just kidding. I do, I do want to say though that my supernatural fandom is fucking amazing because. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can talk about this. Uh, my my actors have started a fund. For hurricane relief, yeah. and in four days they have raised over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's a hundred percent of it's going to go to the relief. Nice. Because yeah, they raised so much in the first twenty four hours; it was ridiculous. Their goal was fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. And they surpassed that within hours of announcing the fundraising. Wow. And now their goal is three hundred fifty thousand. And they're already past 250000 And it's just like, this is the crazy, stupid, generous fandom I belong to. Yes. I mean, like Steve said, that doesn't make them not crazy, because yes, they're crazy. But it makes them less crazy. crazy than our president. That's true. That's true, Steve. Yeah. But they're crazy with big hearts. Yes. You know, I mean, we have senators and fucking congressmen and shit Talking about like what? What? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was the vice president who was talking about how we shouldn't fund Hurricane Katrina relief, right? Yeah. And he used a our Bible very, passage. Our, our yeah. Fucking vice Ted, Ted Cruz in particular. I yeah. mean, sure, it might have something to do with the fact that Jared and Jensen both live in Texas. Mm-hmm. But you know, still, they're helping. They're doing more than the president. Yeah. So yeah. that's a shout out to my supernatural fandom. You know how yesterday I was talking and to you, wait, honey, NPR about- just, uh, I heard on the radio on the way home, NPR just said that Trump is donating a million dollars of his own money. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure he is. Oh, my God. One Fuck million. that. That's money that he already owes us. He's <laughs> run the Secret Service broke. Yeah. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, that's okay. Rant on, baby. Hey. Rant on. Hey, honey, you know how uh, yesterday I was talking to you about how Jolt Cola is coming back because eventually everything will be coming back? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, right now on my Facebook feed, I, I got an ad for the new Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, Teddy Ruxpin is coming back. The, apparently, they sell them at Target. They've got digital eyes that turn into shapes and stuff. It's really creepy. I'm looking at a video of it right now. Is it creepier? Is, can... is it creepier than the original Teddy Ruxpin with the fucking yes, black eyeliner? The, yes, <laughs> yes, because the eyes are like computerized, so it blinks and it welts up, and he looks tired, and his eyes look up and down and turn into moons and stars and hearts and I don't know. Uh, Green clovers, yeah. Purple shoes. It's creepy. It's creepy as heck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything's coming back. Everything is coming back, basically. And in 2014, Bunny Williams contacted Reverend Steve, telling him that he figured out a way to easily record podcasts, and he had an idea for a film podcast where we do whatever the hell we want to do. Mm-hmm. And I said that I literally knew nothing about podcasts, and Bunny said, hey, man, no pressure. We could do whatever we want to. Say whatever we want to, and maybe two or three years down the line, the show can grow to such a remarkable proportion that it can literally consume our entire life. What do you yeah. say? <laughs> so, of course, I agreed, and that is why we are here today with our vaguely film-related podcast. And, and, and I was that. sainted for that. Need to remind our listening audience, I was sainted for that. Yes, yes, you were sainted for that. Eleanor! Eleanor! You're not getting your own podcast! Always, always gunning. Always gunning for her own podcast. Yes. 